Back in the garage today. Back in the garage. Back in the garage. Back in the garage today. What's going on guys? Back in the garage today, getting ready to install a new pair of grips, uh, ODI lock-ons on my 2020 Husqvarna FE350. It's gonna be very similar for any other style bike. The one tip I'm gonna show you along the way is what to do with these. Notice these have ends on them. If you're installing them with bark busters on the bike or some sort of bar wraps or whatever, got a real quick, easy way for doing that. So uh, let's get started. So I've been a fan of ODI grips for a while. I, I like them for a couple of reasons. One, you don't have to use any sort of you know safety wire or anything to put them on because they are lock on style as you can see the ones that are on here they just have a small i believe that's four millimeter allen on there to uh, secure them and the other cool thing about them is is you get a new throttle tube every time you install them and they're not really any more expensive than any other grip out there so to get started i'm gonna have to remove the bark busters on each side i'm gonna go ahead and get these off and then we'll get the left side grip off and then uh, we'll get to work on the throttle tube over there. Now the one thing you guys may have noticed is this nut that we used as a spacer and that's because up until 20 minutes ago I had the headlight on here and we just needed these things to be out a bit wider. I'm gonna have to make some adjustments now because we're gonna end up putting them in a little bit further. I'm not gonna use that spacer because I ride in the woods and I need a little bit more uh, <laughs> narrower bar. So um, anyway, I got the bark buster off. Next thing we're gonna do is get an Allen down here, un uh, loosen up this screw and this grip will slide right off. Okay, so I was wrong earlier. This is actually a T15 Torx bit. Just loosen that up. Just like that, grip comes right off. That's why I love these things so much. So uh, we're gonna clean this up a little bit and then we're gonna get uh, the new grip prepped to put on. Okay, so another thing I like about these, obviously these have ends. You can get them without ends, but the problem we're gonna have is we slide it on and we have no way to put our bark buster through. So we need to drill this. If you're using a regular rubber grip, what can happen is, is it just collapses. So you end up having to cut it out with a knife. It's kind of a pain in the ass. This has a plastic inside and a plastic end down here. So I've got a special bit we're gonna use. We're just gonna put it on a drill and it ought to clean it out for us real nice. Okay, so I just have the, the grip loosely in the vise just to hold it. We're going to use this bit and we're going to run it down until it gets to the right diameter of what it is we're going to need here. It should be nice and clean, so just put it right dead center. Pretty close. It'll basically just set there where you need it. It is going to leave you with just a little bit of rubber in here that you might have to cut out with a razor blade or a knife. But considering this is on the left side, so it's not going to affect, you know, throttle tube or anything, we're basically done. And we've got a nice, uh, nice hole there that we can slide this thing back on the bike and get our bark buster back on and get this uh, screw cinched down and we'll be done with the left side grip. So this next part is pretty easy. All we have to do is slide the grip on. Now I wanna make sure it's run out to almost the end here. Just leave a little bit of room. And then I think it's something, they say like four newt meters, just tighten this up with your uh, T15 bit. Now the one thing you wanna watch, cause these are half waffle, make sure you get the waffle design where you want it. Generally, if this thing's just kind of, you know, parallel with the ground, you're pretty good right there. So I'm gonna cinch this down and then get my bark buster back on. Okay, so I adjusted my bark buster, got my grip installed. Now we're gonna move over to the uh, throttle side. A Little bit trickier, but still pretty easy to do. So uh, let's go over here and start to get this bark buster removed on the right-hand side of the bike. There it goes. Okay, so with the bark buster removed, next thing we're gonna do is just Loosen up the throttle housing, just eight millimeter on here. Should be able to slide this off. We're gonna have to take it all the way apart here in a second. We're just gonna slide it off for now. Okay, so because this is the uh, throttle tube side, it's very important we get this cleaned up. So I'm gonna use a little bit of contact cleaner and uh, just make sure this is good and clean before we start to uh, move any further. 
Okay, so for this next part, we got to make sure we have the right cam on the end of our throttle tube slash grip. Uh, ODI does provide this little uh, guide so you can take a look at your, your make and model. I know my bike is going to call, and, and they all have little things written on the side of them. Uh, you can see the different cams. This is cam A. That's what my bike calls for. So basically, all we have to do is just pop this off the end and then pop the new one on there. Before I do that though, typically what I like to do is go ahead and pull apart the throttle housing so I can make sure I'm in the right orientation before I pop this new one back on. So I'm going to do that next. Okay, so with the throttle housing, we're just going to go ahead and pull both of these eight millimeter screws out of here. With those pulled out, next thing I want to do is just pull this cover off here. That'll allow me to split the housing. Now I can open this up and I can take a look here at my, at my cam that's on here and just take a look, see where the throttle cables run. We'll pop these off. Just like that. And now we just want to double check, make sure this is, it does not look like the right one. So uh, I'm going to double check my, uh, my numbers here. The other thing you can do is just reuse this one. It just pops off of here and just pop it onto your new grip. So we may end up doing that, but I should have the right one here in the box somewhere. Okay. So upon closer, closer uh, inspection on my bike, it is actually cam M. You can see that matches up perfectly. So I'm gonna pop this one off of the new grip and put this one on. The other thing I'm gonna to wanna to check is the orientation where the waffle is. I wanna make sure it's lined up the same way. So um, it's, it's pretty easy with this uh, one, two, three, four, five. Was that hexagonal shape on there? So we'll get this new one popped on. Okay, so you can see I've got the new one popped on there. Next thing we're gonna do, uh, and I'm not gonna show it, same thing we did to the last grip. We're just gonna go ahead and take that drill bit out and clean that out one more time. Okay, so I just cleaned that out off camera. Make sure the inside of your throttle tube's clean. Now we're gonna get the throttle cables and the housing put back on here. We're gonna have to be careful when we put this grip back on. We don't want it sticking out past, especially since we're running Bark Busters, so, because it can rub. So I'll show you, we'll leave just a little bit of room on there when we get this back on. Okay, so with the throttle tubes lined back up, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this piece of rubber back over here. I've just got the screws in there real, real loosely. We're going to slide this back on and this is where we're going to want to check for a few things. One, we're going to make sure this is in alignment properly because that's what helps align our grip. Two, like I was saying before, I want to leave this just a little bit to the inside of the end of this bar because the bark buster is going to go here and the last thing I want is the little bit of rubber around here on the throttle tube dragging on the on the bark buster, which isn't allowing it to snap back in place, or it may be creating a drag when I'm, when I'm on the throttle. So just wanna check that. Once I get it where I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and snug down these two eight millimeters at five newt meters. Okay, so with those snugged up, I just wanna check my throttle action. That feels good. Now I need to adjust my bark buster a little bit because like I said, I'm doing away with those spacers. So let me do that, and then we're gonna check it one more time, and then we're done. Okay, so with the Bark Buster back on, I just want to check my uh, throttle action. No drag, feels good, done. So anyway guys, that's how you install a set of ODI lock-on style grips on a 2020 Husqvarna FE350, or really any dirt bike. It's the same process. Hopefully you enjoyed that tip of that drill bit. I think I picked mine up at Harbor Freight for drilling out the ends if you are running Bark Busters or some sort of bar wraps, makes it a whole lot easier to do. I realize grips are, are a personal thing. Some people are gonna like them, some people aren't gonna like them. Like I said, I like them because they're pretty reasonably priced. You get a new throttle tube each time, and especially if you're testing out different handlebars, it's nice to be able to unlock them and put them back off and on without having to you know, go through grips or run safety wire or whatever, however you secure yours to your bike. It just makes it simple. and. Uh, I find them comfortable and they last pretty well. So um, anyway, hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider that subscribe button because if you like motorcycles, well, this is the place to be. If you have any questions about the grips or the install process, whatever, something I didn't cover, let me know down in the comments section below. I'll do my best to answer them. And as always, I'll talk to you again soon.